بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي I said I begin with the praise that belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace mercy and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his beloved family members upon his beloved companions and upon all of us and our family members amin allahumma amin I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me in my speech to remove the defects of my tongue to make my task easy for me and bless me and grace me even more out of his grace and mercy so that all of you can understand my speech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah at Surah an uh, Surah at Tawbah, Surah number 9 and Ayah number 36. He mentions that, <clears throat> that sh verily with Allah, the number of months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are 12. Allah says that inna idda to shuhuri in the Allah ithnana ashrata shahran fi kitab Allah. That with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has ordained that there are 12 months in, in a year. And Allah says that He, he decreed when? يَوْمَ الْخَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ When He created the heavens and the earth. So from this ayat we come to know that Allah has prescribed 12 months in a year. And this was not ordained in, in 2012 or in... 2000 or whatever but it was ordained when back when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth and then in this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says minha from it arba'atun hurumun there are four sacred months so out of the 12 Allah mentions there are four it's not a hadith all right Allah mentions there are four sacred months and then to go on he says that this is the right deen. This is the right deen. And then he says, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا That don't oppress yourself. Uh, don't oppress, don't commit sins in those months. In those, specifically in those four months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now, when Allah has mentioned that there are 12 months in a year, and when you and I have, are also living and our calendar also from January to February, uh, from Jan to December is also 12 months. One question arises, what's the difference? Are they same or are they different? From the Islamic viewpoint, are they same or are they different? With that, I introduce the topic of this afternoon. What is the difference or how different is it today inshallah in our class? It's not going to be a fiqh or an aqidah class, but surely it's going to be an informative class. And I inshallah with the help of Allah, I'm sure, sure that you are going to get so much of information today from this class that probably you said, subhanallah, I never knew that this even existed in our, in our life regarding the Islamic calendar. And the reason I took this is, this is the week that the Gregorian or the Christian calendar has started. So you and I should know some differences between the Islamic and the Christian calendar and why the Islamic calendar is far superior than any calendar that exists today. So analyzing both, inshallah, we come to today's class, the Islamic calendar. And the verse that I've quoted in the beginning was of Surah at tawbah Surah number 9 and Ayah 36 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, the number of months with Allah are 12 uh, in the register of Allah and the day He created the heavens and the earth. Of these, four are sacred. So Allah mentioned in this ayat, four are sacred. Right? That is the correct religion. Then Allah mentions, so do not wrong yourself during them. Now something really important. Something really important. Now, if, alright, I am a teacher 
and if I asked you, there are two ways to approach any subject, right? One is to score 100 out of 100, correct? If I say, guys, I want you to really study well. But the second approach is what? Guys, I want you to study so much that you don't fail. Correct? This is what Allah is telling. The second approach, where he says, forget the good deeds. Is anything of good mentioned here? Nothing. Allah only mentions there are 12 months, four of them are sacred. In them, <coughs> forget the good, don't commit sins. Alright? So sins have been highlighted to show that if you commit sins in these four months, it is really, really, really grave. And then Allah mentions, fight against the disbelievers collectively as they fight you collectively. So Allah gives something of the disbelievers that they are collective when they approach you. Like Allah's Messenger says in a hadith that there will come a time when all the nations will call upon them, they will call upon united to fight against you. So this is something that Allah has already mentioned and the way they are. And Allah gives us an advice that we also should be collective. But don't worry, it's never going to happen. Alright, because we are Muslims. So don't worry, chill out. Next, and Allah knows and surely Allah is with the muttaqeen. Alright, the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, from this verse, we understand there are 12 months in the Islamic calendar, there are 12 months in the calendar that we and you and I follow, right? So, when you analyze both the calendars, we know that there's a solar calendar and there's a lunar calendar, right? And the solar calendar is what? Is the, the calendar that you and I follow, the Gregorian calendar. But then that has... If you go back to the history, and I'll give you some information about that. If you go back to the history, it's got a lot of changes. It's got a lot of changes. And there's one problem. And that is not yet solved even up to this day. All right? Even though this calendar exists way before the Islamic calendar. When did the Islamic calendar even come into existence? Anybody knows? 1,400 years back. All right? The Hijrah. And I'll give you some information about that as well. So now, if you go back, the solar calendar is calculated based on the position of the sun, the, rev the revolutions around the sun, and it takes about, they've calculated, 365.25. Correct? 365 and one fourth. That's what we studied in, in, in our subjects. But the problem is, I've never seen a one fourth day. Correct? We always written 365 slash one fourth or 2.5. 2 the problem is we've never seen a one fourth day and or we've seen one extra day every four years. And the person who was born on February 29th gets cursed all his life. Right? He's only eight when he's 32. He's only 16 when he's 64. Subhanallah. So if you go back to history as to how this started, it actually started by the Egyptians way back, way back, way back. Right? Egyptians, where they calculated based on a sun dog, based on a star called Dog Star, where they actually calculated the flooding of the river Nile. And they said that it, the, 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 the calendar consists of 30 days, and the, the calendar consists of 12 months, and each month has 30 days. But then, they, what they did was they, when they said 365, they added five days at the end of the year. So there was a problem. Problem number one, they, they, they had 30 consecutive days for 12 months. The 12th month, they had five extra days. Then there was a lot of changes after that. And then again, in the same country, Egypt, there was a person called <coughs> Ptolemy III. And he said... This is wrong. What we should do is we should make the, uh, we should balance it out to either 30 and 31 days and make it even and add or decrease one day from a month. All right. So calculation came up to removing a day from February. And how did it came? Even nobody knows in to, to this date. Then came the, the Roman calendar. And in 45 BC, when they started putting their calendar, the Greeks, on, based on the Greek calendar, they again, they said, 
let's do it this way, 12 months, either having 30 or 31 days, and then they came up to 360, and they, 365, and they said, let's make it a quarter of a day as it increases, and they did so on. Then came later on, in the early about 1600, a person known, known as Pope Gregory, where he instilled the, the fact that let's go back and make yani, 365 days and give a leap year. All right, a leap year. This is just a, a small introduction to this, not making it too confusing and boring. Now, this is with regards to this, the calendar that we follow. Now, when you come to the lunar calendar, it's based upon the moon. All right, the solar is based upon the sun, the lunar is based upon the moon. What we do is we take the start of the crescent, the moon, when it's visible, we go full moon, and then it starts diminishing, it, come, it becomes nil again. So that is calculated based on 29 or 30 days. 29 or 30 days is a month, not 31. So this is what Allah's Rasul has said, that we are an illiterate nation, we don't calculate, but we see and we fast and we see and we break the fast. Your month is either 29 or 30. And he mentioned 10, 10 and 9. All right. So from this, we understand that when you calculate either 29 and 30, it comes to exactly 354 days. The Islamic year consists of 354 days, 11 days less than your regular year. So that's 365 and a quarter. And this is 354 exact. All right. Now, who started this? Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. So this was not during the Prophet's time. This was not during Abu Bakr's time. This was in during Umar radiallahu an's time. And when was this? It was in the third or fourth year. All right. I'll give you some information inshallah for that. Now, when you come and ask a question, why is it so important? Why should we even get into calendars? Why is it so important? I'd like to show you one verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah 189, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When they ask you about the new moons, say to them, all right, they are measurements of time for people. From this ayat, what do we get? We get a command when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, say, it's used for measuring time for people and for hajj. So from this we understand that it is actually a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you and I follow the Islamic calendar, there is a reward in it. Subhanallah, there is a reward in it. Why? Because Allah has commanded us to follow. Allah has commanded us to follow. And it's very unfortunate that you and I have actually forgotten the Islamic calendar. And I, would, I want to embarrass you guys. I want to embarrass you guys. Come on, who can tell me the 12 in order? All right, subhanallah. Okay, don't sing the nasheed, sister. <laughs> All right, it's very unfortunate, guys. Right, we've just completely lost touch. We know Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Why do we know Ramadan? Because there are so many moon fighting committees. Not moon sighting committees, but moon fighting committees. I just changed that word. All right, alhamdulillah, we are so united that we have so many moon fighting committees. And by the way, these moon sighting committees are uh, they only show up on two times in a year, correct? Two times in a year, when all the sheikh kebab and the chicken kebab and the and the, and all the drinks are put down and on the terrace of some some someone's house and they call and they're made to see the moon. And what happens when one state sees the moon? All the other declare that no, they're not from us. Allahu Akbar. All right. So if you go back, Allah says the moon is used to measure time. Allah didn't say the sun is used to measure time. The moon is used to measure time. The sun is used for another purpose. What is that? To measure salah. To measure your time for salah. This is used for months. So, let us now understand the Islamic calendar in detail, inshallah. And how it came about. Number one. How and when did it come about? The first heading. It came... In the third or fourth year of Umar ibn al-Khattab's Khalifa time. And who, who asked him to do it? Anyone knows the Sahaba? 
Ali radiyallahu an no sister Abu Musa al-Ashri radiyallahu an he wrote a letter to Umar ibn Khattab saying when he was transferred to another place as a governor when all the sahabas moved when Islam spread in, in Umar's time really became very vast they wanted key members as governors so he sent sahabas when he sent Abu Musa al-Ashri after a couple of years he said to Umar he wrote to Umar saying that Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why don't you put a date for all the correspondence that we have? For anything that going forward, if you open a letter, we don't know from which year, which date, right? We know who, who wrote to whom, but when did he write? We don't know. So he says, everybody use a calendar, why not Muslims? So then Umar ibn Khattab liked this idea and he called the senior companions. And he called the senior companions and from them, well, five views that came out. From them came five views to derive a calendar for Islam. Number one came that they said, let us follow the exist the Persian or the Roman calendar. Number one. The Sahaba said that. Let's follow them. But then the famous hadith of Allah's Rasul said, do not be like the Jews and the Christians. So from that, Umar ibn Khattab refused to take that view. He says outright, he says, no, I don't want to be like them. Because if you go back to the Adhan, if you go back to the Adhan, he is the same Umar ibn Khattab that he came out and he said, you know, let's, I mean, he said, I, I saw a dream. And when people said, let us use the bell, like the Christians, Rasulullah denied it. He says, no, we want to be different. All right. What's the thing that makes the dif difference between humans and animals? It's your voice. The ability to speak, correct? The ability to speak. The Adhan is something so intellect. The Adhan is so beautiful. It makes you distinct. It makes you above the creation of all the others. The ability to think and speak. And that's why Allah also chose the human voice for it. Right? Next. So he outright, he rejected this. Then there were four opinions left. Number one. And this is really important. I got this for a reason. Number one. Everybody said, let us take the birth year of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The year that he was born. The second opinion was, let us take when he became Nabi, when he became the Rasul. So now, for, two, for a group, I'm asking you, which is more important, the birth of Rasulullah or his mission, the start of his mission? Start of his mission. Fine, you guys are all... My students are obviously the same start of the mission. You guys would have come with green turbans and said, birth of Rasulullah. <laughs> Alright, come on. There's no way you're going to say Rasul's mission was great. It's the birth, khalas. Right? The birthday. How can you not celebrate the birthday? Haram, ya, ikhwan. Alright? So, Umar Wade, the first, he says the birth year of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Going back, the, to calculate the year of birth was easy. Why? Subhanallah, may Allah bless you. The year of the elephants. Remember, Allah's Rasul was born on the year of elephants when they when Abraha attacked, was about to attack the Kaaba, and the entire field got destroyed. The army of elephants. So everybody knew that Allah's Rasul was born during that year. So it is very easy to calculate. Okay, let's start from that year. And his age became 63 plus whatever, so on. So they said, okay, fine. That was one view. Second view says no. It's greater that Allah's Rasul became a messenger of Allah. So that was the third opinion, all right? One was cancelled, that was the second from these four. The third opinion was, let us take from the hijrah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reason that the Sahabas gave the, the people who supported this view was that bought a new light, that bought, that bought a new era to, to Islam, that bought a new face to Islam. The migration from Makkah to Medina, that brought strength to Islam. That was the third. All right. So now the fourth. Some, some people said the best that we can calculate is something that passed about five, six years back. And that is what? The death of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now the birth and the death were taken with the Risalat time, the messengership time and the change of Islam. Umar ibn Khattab chose what out of these four? 
Subhanallah. He chose something that brought a change. Alright? And that's why we, as great Muslims, we spend the whole year drinking and gambling and having fun. And the New Year's time, January 1st, you get up and say, Ya Allah, I'm going to change now. Correct? Last night you partied on the 31st night. And then first morning you think, I'm going to become the best Muslim. That's my New Year resolution. Right? To get up for Fajr on the next day. Which day? January 2nd. Why not January 1st? We just partied all night, man. Right? You came back only at Fajr. Right? So your new resolution starts. So Umar ibn Khattab saw that Islam changed at this time. And I purposely got this and I'm explaining this again. Look again. One of the greatest Sahaba overruled his birth, overruled his death, and overruled his messengership time for what? For a change that came into Islam. For something that was the best thing on earth for Islam was the migration. So from this we understand that even the Sahabas didn't even, you know, they were not too thing about the Prophet's birthday, the way you and I are today, unfortunately, right? Some of the WhatsApp messages were like crazy, right? Allahu Akbar. It just went beyond imagination. Big Maulanas, yani cutting the cake and Allahu Akbar. So, these five, number one, let's go back to the Jews and Christians. Number two, the birth of the Prophet Islam. Number three, uh, the Risalat of the Prophet Islam. Number four, the migration. Number five, the death. What was chosen? The migration. Then they had another problem. What problem? From where to start? We have 12 months. Which becomes the first? Who said Muharram is the first? Nobody said Muharram is the first. Nobody even knew Muharram was the first. So how to start? Then they took something phenomenal. They took two things. Based on the Hijrah. All right? they, they asked a couple of people. Medina. The people of Medina. When did you come and meet Rasulullah first? Remember if you go back to the first Aqaba. The first pledge. If you know a little bit of the Seerah. The, on the 12th year, six people came. One of them was Jabir ibn, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anh. And they took a pledge from Rasulullah. You know when this was? During Hajj days. And immediately after Hajj, they spent some time and they met Rasulullah. They wanted to learn and they became Muslims. And they went back and they accept, and they, you know, so many people accepted Islam. So that was the change. So when they asked him, when did they took the, when they took the pledge, they said towards the end of the Hijjah, before Muharram. So Umar ibn al-Khattab said, fine, two things. Number one, Dhil Hijjah marks what? Dhil Hijjah marks the month of Hajj. What is Hajj? The last pillar that was made fard. So Umar said, the last pillar to make to become fard was Dhil Hijjah. And the, the month that was the change, that brought a change was Muharram, where the people of Medina took the pledge. From there, he said, the mark of the new Islamic calendar is Muharram. Subhanallah. So it's not that Muharram is the first calendar, first month of the year, actually. We actually don't know which is the first year of the month. Because Allah only says, I have, pres I have ordered 12 months. Which is first, oh, nobody knows. Allahu Alam. But from the Islamic point of view, Umar ibn Khattab was the man who said that the allegiance made for the Hijrah, which changed Islam, was before Muharram. And the first month to, to start the Islamic calendar will be Muharram. And that's how the Islamic calendar came into existence and Muharram became the first month. <clears throat> now, so what are the dangers? What are the dangers in changing our calendar? As Muslims, what are the dangers in changing a calendar? Let's go back to this verse. Let's go back to this verse. Or let's go back to the verses before. Alright, I look at this verse, so do not wrong yourself during them. How many months are sacred? Four. Now if I have to say Allah has counted four and said in these four months don't commit sins. Now where are these four months? September, October, November, December, when? January, February, when? Problem number one is it makes me 
heedless. It makes me forget the sacred months, which you and I as a Muslim can't forget. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because ibadah is tied to it. Our ibadah is tied to it. Staying away from sins is one of the greatest ibadah. Greatest ibadah, staying away from sins. That is tied to it. Second is the next ayat where Allah says, Qul, say to them, what? The moon, the new moons, the new moon is made as a measurement of time. Made so that you measure time. That means it's a command from Allah. It's a sharia. So if you are, you and I can't change the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you and I, if you change our Islamic calendar, we are actually changing the what? The sharia. It's a big sin. Allahu Akbar. Right? So even though we are following this system and we really can't change the system, let us at least know them. Right? And I'll tell you, just because you live in Saudi Arabia or, or Middle East doesn't mean that you are actually following the Islamic calendar. Right? Trust me, there are people who are really dumb. And there's an example that I, 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 I met. And this person, he comes down from, after 27 years, he's lived in Jeddah. Right? 27 years, he's lived, worked. You know, all his life, he's been associated with the Islamic calendar. And he's been talking about Ramadan, when Ramadan was in something like, you know, in never, October, November. Right? Now, Ramadan is about June, July. So he says, he was talking to us and he was uh, mentioning that, you know, it's going to come, you know, the, uh, the year is decreasing, the Ramadan is decreasing. And sometimes I feel, you know, it's very soon that Ramadan and Hajj will come together. <laughs> so I said, Subhanallah, 27 years in Jeddah, brother, come on. <laughs> he says, you know, sometimes I feel that Ramadan and Hajj will come together, Subhanallah. Imagine making Arafat on the light of Qadr. <laughs> right? Allahu Akbar. That's like celebrating uh, Christmas on, on uh, Independence Day, right? So, alhamdulillah, you will find people who have no clue even they, whether they live in Saudi Arabia or, or, or Dubai, all right? So, at least as Muslim, we should know these 12 months. And it's easy to memorize if you know that nasheed, by the way, all right? The 12 months of the Islamic calendar. That's a problem. Next. The inaccuracy of this calendar, of the Gregorian calendar, the Christian calendar, or the solar, solar calendar, the problem still is there and it's not fixed, right? There's no way in science today, and even today it's not proved, and they have no answers, that a month can vary from 28 to 31 days. It's not possible, right? If you study a little bit of science, it's not possible to have 28 days and 31 days. What do I mean by that? Feb 28 and March 31. It's not possible to have a month like that. There's a flaw in it itself. There's a mistake in it itself. And towards the end of my talk, inshallah, in a couple of, I mean, about 10, 20, 20 minutes, I'll show you the disadvantages and they're phenomenal. All right, they're really phenomenal. And you're like, subhanAllah, I never knew this. So it's not possible for you to have a month that is 28 days and suddenly the next month to have 31 days. And this answer is not even answered till now, 2016, not yet answered. And I know for sure they can never answer it. The next problem is when we studied 365 and a quarter. And like I mentioned to you, I'm still waiting for that quarter day, right? At least one day, right? The sun rises at 7 and 12 o'clock it's gone down. Subhanallah. What is the ruling on celebrating New Year? Whether it's the, this time on January 1st or whether it's the Islamic year on Muharram. Know that Allah and His Rasul never celebrated. Uh, sorry, Allah's Rasul and His Sahabas never celebrated it. So it's not something that you give importance to. Yes, it's a New Year that you should know that time has passed, one more year has passed. It's something that you, do, you need to read take to account like a, a beautiful quote that I read this morning or sometime back or yesterday it said that non-muslims ask a Muslim why you celebrate why don't you celebrate New Year so Muslims reply was I take myself to account or review myself once five times in a day and not once in a year right so five times in a day we are actually talking to Allah you don't have to wait for one entire year the end of December and say ya Allah now I change right doesn't make sense. Now, unfortunately, even Muslims have started this 
at the first of Muharram, they actually celebrate the New Year. They say, Happy New Year. What's happy in that man? All right? There's nothing happy. Right? Same marriage. Same place. You haven't got richer, by the way. Right? So what's happy in that? And by the way, nobody celebrates when you become old. Right? You, you don't reduce your age. You only grow older. So nobody celebrates when you become old. So really, there's no reason that you and I have to get excited for a new year and go parting out. As Allah's Messenger says in a hadith, that do not be like the Christians and the Jews. And another hadith, he says, you, the, my nation will follow them exactly, forearm to forearm, hand to hand. So much so that when they enter the lizard hole, you will enter it too. So today, when they do certain things, we are so excited to follow them. Just want to take the Western culture, right? Now, I come to the names of the Islamic calendar and why they were named so. That's important, right? All of us know, okay, fine, Muharram Safal, Rabi Awal, and Rabi Thani, and then uh, Jamad al Ula, and so on. But why have they na been named so? That's important. So that's some good information. The first, before I get into why, let's understand why is it important to know the months? Can anybody tell me something really important? Why is it important to know the months? Because every single month has some act of ibadat linked to it. Every single month has an act of ibadat linked to it. For example, Muharram. What's on Muharram? You, you fast on the day of Ashura. Then the next month, Safar. Right? You believe in Tawheed. Safar, subhanAllah, actually, actually removes shirk in you. You know, the, the amount of shirk that people do in the month of Safar, looking at why it was... You know, I'll tell you why Safar is actually meant so bad. Because Muharram was one of the sacred months. Muharram was one of the sacred months. And sacred means haram months which people did not fight. So they would wait for an entire month to get over Muharram. And the first of Safar, they would go out with swords. And kill and loot people on the highway. Kill and rob people. And Safar comes to the word Sifar. Sifar means zero in Arabic. So people would actually become nil. People would lose their property. Some people would say, today I'm a Sifar. I don't have anything today because I've been robbed. So Sifar people feared because people would attack. And they, and they attached a, a bad omen to Sifar. And Allah's Messenger on that said a hadith that there is no, there's no bad omen to Sifar. There is absolutely no bad omen. And whoever believes in omen has committed shirk. So from this, Safar is very important to know because it, it actually cleanses ourselves from shirk and tawheed. Then we have different months. For example, Ramadan, we have Hajj, we have Rajab, we have Sha'aban. We have so many things that Allah's Messenger has tied Ibad to. And first of all, you should know these four sacred months. All right, we'll come to those. So now let's come to the first month, Muharram. Muharram comes to the word Haram. Haram means forbidden. Forbidden to fight. Khalas. You can't fight, you can't commit sins. And Muharram is one of the sacred months. So is the, the Islamic calendar starts with the sacred month. Teaching you what? The first thing of the year, what is Allah teaching you? Don't commit sins. Subhanallah. A lesson to start with. Don't commit sins for the whole year. Try to abstain from it. Towards the end, Hajj. Wash away all your sins. Subhanallah. Alright? It's so amazing. How do you end Zil Hijjah? Arafat. Day of Arafat. Whoever fasts on the day of Arafat, what happens? Sins of? Two years. Subhanallah. So, Muharram starts telling you don't sin. Zil Hijjah starts saying that, fine, you've, you've sinned, man. Go and fast at least one day of your life. Alright? And, and Allah forgives your sins two days. Two years. Subhanallah. So, Muharram where the Arabs would stop fighting. That's the word haram. From that it comes Muharram. Second, Safar. I'll show you this whole chart but I won't explain it first because I know the moment I show everybody starts writing. As you say it's something you know Greek and Persian that I'm writing right. So let's go through with it and then inshallah I'll give it to you. The word Safar. Safar comes to the word Sifar. Sifar means zero in Arabic. Sifar, Wahid, Islam, Thalatha, Arba, Khamsa and so on. Sifar means zero. Zero equates not to the number, but zero equates to some people who lost their property 
uh, in, in war or in battle or in robbery in, during travel. And nobody would travel in Safar. Nobody would come out in Safar. They would always think it's a bad omen because they would lose their wealth. Next, Rabbiul Awwal. Rabbiul Awwal is the first month of where it's all greenery. It's all the plantation. It's all greenery where the animals go out and graze. And this is where Rabbiul Awwal comes from, from basically uh, happiness. All right? Where the, the animals would go and graze out because the crops come out. And this would last for two months. So they would say, Rabiul Awwal and Rabiul Thani. Thani means the second. The first month and the second month. Where the animals would go out and graze and come out and come back full. Alright, they would get sufficient food for themselves. Next, Jumad al Ula. Jumad al Ula, at that time when they named this, it was so cold, so cold that the, the nights would go. They did not measure, but the nights would go even minus degrees in the, in the Arab culture. And they would find water to be frozen in the night. Wherever they had water, they, the, a, a, a layer of ice would be formed. And they would say the water has become hard. Hard in Arabic means Jumada. Jumada means something that is, uh, because something that is solid, hard and solid. So this name was given because the water became ice. And this would last again for like like December, January was winter. This would last for two months. And they would say Jumad al-Ula and Jumad al-Akhir. Why not Jumad al-Awwal and Jumad al-Athani? Two months, fine. But even Rabi al-Awwal is first and second. But why? There it was first and second. Here it is first and last. Subhanallah, because the winter ends there, the greenery is still there, but doesn't end. It lasts for two months, but doesn't end. Here the winter ends, and now you're hitting summer. You're almost touching summer because it's Rajab, Shaban, and Ramadan. Ramd, Ramadan comes from the word Ramd. Ramd means real hot. Ramd means heat. So you're approaching summer, and that's why Jumad al, it's not Jumad al Awwal and Jumad al Akhir. Uh, sorry, Athani, it's Jumad al Ula and Jumad al Ukhra. Alright, first and the last. Another, uh, Jumad al uh, Awwal and Jumad al Akhir. Next comes Rajab. <coughs> Rajab means to remove something. Rajab means to remove something. Now, again, Rajab is a sacred month. By the way, Rajab is a sacred month, which is the seventh month of the Islamic calendar and it's sacred. This was why? Because the, the people, the Arabs would stop fighting because again, it's a sacred month. So they would remove their spear, the, the, the knife of their spears. They would untie it. The stick, the spears would be tight. The tight, the arrow would be tied to the, to the stick to make it sharp. The first of Rajab, they would remove that and untie it. So Rajab comes from the word remove, to remove something. So Rajab is actually when they remove all their weapons and they keep it inside and they don't fight for that whole month. Next Sha'ban comes, it's positioned between two great things. Sha'ban means positioning of something to, between two great things. What is two great things? Rajab and Ramadan, subhanAllah, a sacred month and a holy month. So Sha'ban means sacred and uh, something that comes between two months. Next, Ramadan. Ramadan is actually not holy. Ram comes from heat, excessive heat. Ramadan comes from excessive heat. And this was given, the name was given to Ramadan. And subhanAllah, Allah chose which month for Ramadan, for, uh, for fasting? The month that has severe heat. All right? However, Alhamdulillah, there's a beautiful phenomenon in the lunar calendar that saves us. Alhamdulillah. Next, number 10, I'll tell you that point. Number 10, Shawwal. Shawwal means to rise, to raise something. Not to rise, but to raise something. And Shawwal was the month that the, 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 the camels would get really heavy due to pregnancy and they would raise their tails. They would raise their tails and they would get really, really heavy because of their pregnancy. Next, 
Dhul Qaida. What is the meaning of Qaida? Qaida means to sit. Qaida and to sit. So people would again stop fighting because Dhul Qaida was again a sacred month. And they would sit down and not fight. So again, it's a mark of a sacred month where people would not fight. Next comes Dhul Hijjah, the month of Hajj, where everybody, even before, the pre, even before Allah's Rasul, people would perform Hajj during this month. It was f- famous because Ibrahim Islam started this procedure. With that, just show you all the 12 months so that you can actually take it down. <coughs> Alright, the first was Muharram, comes from the word forbidden, called you because Arabs would stop fighting. Second, Safar means zero in Arabic, name given because Arabs would loot or lo- all the property from the enemy or defeating them. Then Rabiul Awal means to graze in Arabic because they, the cattle would graze. Rabiul Thani also means to graze. The second, where the cattle would come out and graze. Jumad al Ula means comes from solid in Arabic, something that is really solid and that would become ice. Right, given to, to because water would freeze during this month and that would te- technically be in the nights. If you say that water froze during the day or in a desert, then you, you're not living in a desert. There's only a photo of a desert in your house. All right, Jumad al Ula, the same thing, pa akhir, sorry. Then comes Rajab. Rajab means to remove. What would they remove? They would give in this name because the Arabs would remove the heads of the spears and refrain from fighting again because of the sacred month. Then comes Shaban. Shaban is anything that is positioned between two things, important things. One was sacred month and the next was holy month. Ram, Ramad, Ramadan comes from the word heat. Right? Means heat in Arabic. And the, because of the excessive hot temperatures, this name was given. Next, Shawwal means to raise where the, the pregnant camels would sh- be heavy and raise, raise their t- tails. Dhul Qaida means to sit. Qaida is to, meaning to sit in Arabic where people would stop fighting and they would sit down. In their houses, houses they would sit down. Because, why sit down? Because Dhul Qaida is a sacred month. Dhul Hijjah is a sacred month. Muharram is a sacred month. So three months there would be no fighting. So it's literally like sitting down for the next three months. Then comes Zil Hijjah, refrains, refers to Hajj in Arabic, where people would perform Hajj during this month. Now, why these four months are sacred and what are the four months? Allah's Rasul says in a hadith, which is classified Sahih, He says, O people, time has gone back and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he says that there are 12 months in a year and four of them are sacred. Allah's Messenger says, three are consecutive. Dhul Qaida, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. And one, the fourth is Rajab. So that's Dhul Qaida, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. Again, something phenomenal. Allah starts the year Telling you don't commit sins, Allah ends the year saying don't commit sins. So Allah is focusing a lot on sins in these four months. Then Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in a hadith that sorry, it's narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that these four months have been made sacred from Allah and Allah knows best. But he says the best view is that Allah prohibits sins in this and that's why he's raised the rank so from this the ulama say in these four months between committing between doing any evil and between doing any good which has more weight yani, let me put it in a better way to avoid evil and to do good which is has more weight to avoid evil has greater weight in before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take Ramadan, it's the opposite. Because Ramadan, one salah is multiplied so many times. One fast is multiplied so many times. One small deed, zikr is multiplied so many times. So the multiplication of deeds is way beyond expectation. But here Allah focuses on sins. So we should know, which month are we in by the way? Sure? 
Oh yeah, we celebrated the birthday, Prophet's birthday, right? How can we just forget that? Subhanallah. By the way, how was the cake? Nice? Alhamdulillah. Good. Alright. Was it the cake of Medina or Makkah or what? Or Ajmer? Alright. Next. Something that I tried to put in this class was the disadvantages of the solar calendar, the Gregorian calendar with the lunar calendar. Alright? Now, how many days in a year? Point number one. Right? This is something nice that I, I really found. Point number one. How many days in a year does the solar calendar have? Forget the quarter day which we'll never find. 365. How many days the Islamic calendar? So what's the difference? 11 years. Alright? Sorry, 11 days. So, if as an employee, as an employee, you're working 11 days extra for pay. For which, how much amount of pay? Zero. Yes or no? Correct? You have worked for me for 11 extra days of your life. That means, after every 33 years, you've worked an entire year for free. Disadvantage. Islamic calendar gives you full payment. Right? For le 11 less than years. So now my, my guy will say, Brother, let's start following Islamic calendar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Salary, inshallah. <laughs> Sunnah, fees of Allah. So technically, you work for 365 days and you get the same salary. Islamically, you work for 354 days and you get the same salary. Brothers, don't tell me you're so desperate for working that you would work 11 extra days. Right? Obviously, you would take 11 extra days off and get the same pay. That's one disadvantage. First disadvantage. Second disadvantage, which is the biggest, subhanAllah, the biggest. Alright, I'll tell you why. Imagine, we didn't have the lunar calendar. So how would the month start? January. How would the year start? January. How would the year end? December. December. What if you are in a place that the sun, the Maghrib, the Maghrib time or the sunrise to sunset was 20 hours? Okay. When would you get Ramadan? You know something? If you were in a place that the sun rise to sunset was 20 hours, all your life you would be fasting for 20 hours in a day. Because of the lunar calendar, Alhamdulillah, the seasons change. When was Ramadan? Five years back. November. When is Ramadan? Today, June. Now imagine you had winter all your life. All your life you had, for example, December, you, you lived in a place that Ramadan came in December. All your life you'll get December, yes or no? Imagine those poor people that lived in May, that got Ramadan in May. Allahu Akbar. Or imagine Australia, where it's reverse. Alright? Australia, summer is December, right? The days are really, really long in December, Australia. Where my cousin used to study and he used to say that the, the, the Ramadan was for 19 hours. The fast was for 19 hours. Imagine 5 hours you get to eat. In that 5 hours, the Imam Sahib takes 2 hours for Taraweh. <laughs> ya Allah, Ya Kareem. Huh? He doesn't even read fast. Imagine in that you have night series. Even worse. They don't even give Sheikh Kabab. Correct? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. One small cup of tea. What are you going to do? In less than 3-4 hours. Alhamdulillah, Islam, Islamic calendar gives every single person the season of everything. If Ramadan and Hajj. Imagine Hajj. I know my dad and mom, they did, when they did Hajj, they, were, they did Hajj in peak June. And they, were, they, they, they tell me that when they were in Arafat, people would announce that the, the temperature has gone more than 50 and they would ask you to stay inside the tent. I did my Hajj in, ja in December, January 8th. Subhanallah. Cool. Right? I know there's more reward for them. The, hardly the temperatures were high. So Subhanallah, the Islamic calendar gives you 33 years, it makes you touch all seasons. So if you live for 66 years, Alhamdulillah, you've got Ramadan two times in every season. Be it summer or be it winter. Alhamdulillah, just imagine if Ramadan in Bangalore, which is the longest time in Bangalore? May. 
right? Hottest. Imagine Ramadan was always in May. You would do hijrah, man. Right? You would do hijrah from that place. Only for what? For Ramadan. Ya Allah, 8, 14 hours, too much. And we are spoiled guys in Bangalore. Bangalore right? Go to some countries that have 20 hours of Ramadan. Subhanallah. London, one of my friends was there. He, they had about three and a half hours between uh, Isha and, and Sahur. Subhanallah. They had Isha at what? At about 11.30 and Sahur at about 3.30 or 3, 2 30 or 3 o'clock. London, today, this time, this year. Imagine they had Ramadan all their life. Subhanallah. Who would love Ramadan? Who would enjoy then? So Allah gave a season to everything. Alhamdulillah. Second disadvantage in when you have fixed seasons during. For example, we know rainy season this month. Never changes. Correct? We know winter is this month. Never changes. Third point. Like I mentioned to you again, we've never found one fourth day. And if you find it, please let me know. That's the third disadvantage. Right? Fourth disadvantage. Alhamdulillah. Now I'll ask you a simple question. 354, 11 years. Okay? So it happens that technically every 33 years you gain a year. Every 33 years you gain a year. So if my age is 33, exactly February I do... 1 plus 1 for the Islamic year. I become 34. Now, before Allah, do you want 33 years of Salah or 34 years of Salah? 34. Ya Allah, take 34 years. So if you're 66, technically you've lived longer. Yes or no? If a person who doesn't follow Islamic calendar is 66, technically how, what's his age? 68. 68. So two years you've lived longer. Alhamdulillah. People pray, Ya Allah, give Lambi Umar. Answer is just follow the Islamic calendar. Right? Just change your Bangalore press to some Darul Tawheed or something like that in your house. Right? At least you'll see the Islamic calendar. Whatever. So, you live longer. Alhamdulillah. Alright. That's, that's what I try to put, inshallah, to show you that it doesn't make sense. Alhamdulillah. Islam has a solution for everything and it doesn't make sense to follow that. I come to the last heading. And that is the, and that is focusing on this ayat. <clears throat> a little bit on on this time, on spending some time. Do not wrong yourself therein, brothers. In this ayat, there's a lot that Allah tells. There's a lot that Allah tells. Number one, it tells that you should have knowledge of the sacred months. Yes or no? Yes or no? When Allah says, "Don't wrong, don't commit sins in this month." Automatically, what Allah is trying to say that you should know these months. Number one. Second, when Allah says, "Do not commit sins," what should we? What should you fear? Yourself falling into sins. That means a Muslim in these four months is training himself so much that he's he's look he's like you know blowing his footsteps, always looking as where he's going to follow. Three consecutive months, Dhul-Qaeda, Dhul-Hijjah and Muharram, and what happens in Safar? Subhanallah. You, you go back to shirk again, you start believing bad omens. So understand, Allah mentions that don't commit sins. Next, in this particular ayat, that when Allah says do not commit sins, or do not oppress yourself, transgress yourself, the word that Allah used in this ayat is Dhalamu. Not sins, not ithm, or not any zamb. He used, he used the word dhalamu. And I want to throw some light on the word dhalamu. Dhalamu means to oppress. So Allah says, do not oppress yourselves. And do not be an oppressor in the same process. And I want to narrate a hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger says in Imam al-Bukhari. He says, oppression will be darkness for the person on the day of judgment. If you oppress somebody, it will be darkness on the day of judgment. Now, I want to again come back to two points that generally families split. Generally families split because of two points. Number one, husband and wife. Number two, property division. Now, imagine you have a death in a family that is in Dhul Hijjah. And now you have to divide the property. And a typical Muslim brother says, I'm going to take care of my sister all her life. Correct? And what does that sister do? Apply in the court. Because that taking care was only abusive language. 
never given property, never given right, right share, right? What you should do, in fact, you should spend a week here. You should spend a week here and see the number of phone calls or not here exactly, but you should just spend a, a week in Islamic centers today. The number of phone calls you would get for these fights, family property and husband and wife, subhanallah. You can write a PhD. I'm telling you, subhanallah, the list goes on. You can write a book on the number of divorces that are happening in Muslim Ummah. Unfortunately, Allahu Akbar. And generally you find a husband oppressing his wife. And this is what Allah says, do not oppress, do not oppress. For surely oppression will be darkness for you on the day of judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, oh my servants, this is a long hadith, pay attention to this hadith and inshallah I'll close my talk. Allah's messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is a hadith of Qudsi where Allah says, he's, Allah says, oh my servants, I have forbidden oppression for myself. So Allah will never be oppressive upon you and me. Allah never be unjust. Allah says, I have for forbidden oppression upon myself and have made it forbidden upon you. So do not oppress one another. Allah says this, do not oppress one another. Next, Allah says, O oh my servants, all of you who, are, who have gone astray, except for those whom I have guided, seek guidance from me and I will guide you. Then Allah says, O oh my, oh my servants, all of you who are hungry, except those whom I have fed, seek, for, seek food from me and I will feed you. Then Allah says, O oh my servants, all of you who are naked, except the one I have clothed, seek clothing from me and I will clothe you. Then Allah mentions, O oh my servants who have committed sins by the night and the, by the day, I forgive you. So seek forgiveness from me and I will forgive you. Then Allah says, O oh my servants, where the first and the last, where the first and the last to stand before me and ask me something, nothing would decrease from my kingdom. Nothing would decrease from my kingdom. And if the first and the last, and the first and the last would commit sins, then nothing would decrease, nothing would ha yani, uh, decrease from my kingdom and so on. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you cannot find any helper except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah ends this hadith saying that, O oh my servants, commit good deeds and stay away from sins. For surely you will be accounted based upon your deeds. So this is what the ayat reflects. Don't commit sins for you. Surely you will be based upon your, you will be accounted for your deeds. And then Allah mentions, whoever finds good, then let him praise Allah. Whoever finds good, let him praise Allah. And whoever finds something bad, then let him blame himself. For surely it is because of him that the, the, the wrong things have happened. Brothers and sisters, time does not change because of New Year's. Time does not change because of your strong resolution. right? Time changes because from the strength within you change and stop sins and you see the change that will bring in your life inshallah ta'ala like allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there's a beautiful hadith that men people are like camel and nas innam an nas are like camel you would f hardly find one worthy of right people will take resolutions after resolution re resolution after resolution but what happens nobody changes nobody changes it's still 9 a.m. that I get up. It's just so tough to, for me to change my timings, for me to change for Fajr. It's so difficult for to change life and bring changes in our life. All we do is look for different time, options, look for different reasons, but we can't change ourselves. Remember, people, strong men, strong people are those who make changes and don't wait for changes. All right. With that, inshallah, I end my talk with the I hope you understand a little bit of Urdu because it won't make sense if I translate this poem into Urdu. It's a beautiful share. It's a beautiful uh, uh, line. Uh, I hope you understand. I'll try my best to explain it in Urdu, inshallah. The poet says, it's got a lot of wisdom. The poet says, Subeh hoti hai, sham hoti hai. Subeh hoti hai, sham hoti hai. Umr yuhi tamam hoti hai. That means, the day comes and the day goes and your life is just wasted. Subay hoti hai, sham hoti hai, umr means life. Yuhi tamam, tamam means end. Tamam hoti hai. With that I end with a beautiful surah which talks about time. 
والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر. Saying that insan is in in a state of loss, always perpetual loss, except the one who does good and avoids himself from evil. My question to you is: What are you going to stand before Allah? Are you going to stand as losers before Allah, or are we going to stand as winners before Allah? Make Allah make us winners before Him and forgive our sins, and inshallah, make us strong and and try to memorize the months, and inshallah, and look always when Rajab is going to come next, so that you and I, at least, at least, instead of doing good, at least stop evil in our life, inshallah. With that, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastafurukawana tuwilek.